What's up, FOA squad? I'm Anthony, and welcome to our channel, Life with Anthony. I hope you guys are doing well out there. Happy Friday to you guys. So, my initial intent for today's video was to shoot this video outside by the pond, Ricky Lake, uh, in the little circle, little gazebo type thing that they have there but when i went down there the seating area was like all dirty and covered with bird poop and all of that and also not to mention it is cold here today i have on my long sleeves i have on jeans uh, i need to put a hoodie on when i step outside of the van so i decided to shoot this video inside of the van today all right so i posted on the community page about two uh wednesday to ask me some questions that I haven't done a QA and a in about a month, probably two months by now. And you guys came through and I got 193 responses. Of course, I'm not going to get through nowhere near as many as 193, but hopefully I will get to answer some uh, different questions for you guys. So let's get right into it. All right. I'll ask this one, answer this one first because it's a quick answer. Uh, Mary Mary asks, do you have any worst date stories you can entertain us with? That would make for a fun video. Love you, Anthony. Okay, I don't have any worst date stories. Um, I have not done a lot of dating in my life. Um, and the dates that I have gone on have, from my perspective, have been okay, have been pretty good. Nothing bad about them. No bad outcome for them. So I don't have any worst date stories. Okay, let's see. This is from Yolanda Moore and Yolanda asks, I'm so very happy that when you have encounters with strangers at different campsites that they are positive ones, but have you ever had any encounters at campsites that made you feel unsafe or made you think you should leave sooner than planned? This sounds like a question that I've asked answered before. Um, once again, I, I want to state to you guys that there is a reason why I specifically like coming to old male campgrounds. It's a mature crowd. They're very friendly. Um, and it's, it's no nonsense. It's no nonsense. It's not like there are a lot of young folks here, uh, uh, you know, causing a ruckus or anything like that. These are mature people in 50 and up. For the most part, there are some, lots of them that are younger, but the makeup of campgrounds that I have gone to, the ones that I enjoy the best, are of mature people. You know, these aren't people that's going around acting a fool and stuff like that. So it's, it's always, from my perspective, always a positive, a positive experience, um, experience for me. So, no, I have not had not one bad experience in, in terms of people or any other aspect of my campground experiences. Uh, this is why I told you guys in a previous video why I enjoy going to all-male campgrounds because of the environment, because of the vibe that it gives me. It's, it's so friendly. So, it's not a lot of hoopla like, you know, the youngins be doing. So no, all my experiences and all the people that I have met at campgrounds thus far have been really, really positive and I really, really enjoy, once again, the campground vibe. Okay. Joanne Johnston asks, do you think that having a group camp, camp out would be fun or is that too much? or possibly having a weekend with us with daily activities and meetups. You know, I never thought of having like a campground meetup. Um, I don't know what that entails. Um, I'm quite sure if it's something that I would become interested in, I could look it up and find out all the details of uh, entertaining that sort of meetup. But you never know, you know, you never know. I know I've been having my meetups at ramen places and <laughs> things of that nature because um, I think any type of meetup that involves food has to be a good meetup, <laughs> you know, rather than to me, like, now, I, 
I think I wouldn't do a campground because people would have to pay to go into a campground. I think if I did that type of meetup, it would be like at a state park where it doesn't cost anything for your people to go to the park and gather around and people, if they want to, can bring some food items and more like a, 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 a what is it, a picnic type of deal, you know? So... You never know what's coming up with me in in terms of meetups in 2023. So we'll see. All righty. Um, let's see what we want to do here. Okay, France Skipper asks, Hey, Anthony, have you ever done or considered doing a live? I think one of your cooking videos would be great live. You could ask questions as usual and get immediate responses. Uh, we could also cook along with you. Thanks, my brother. Well, the thing about doing, uh, okay, I have done lives. Uh, I will say that um, I have not done a lot of lives, um, but I have done some. The thing about a cooking video uh, live is that it's, it would be like this. Cook, look, cook, look. And I have to read, and, and the, the words are going to be flying down um, a million miles per hour, and I'm going to try to cook. And, 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 and I just think it would be a little difficult to keep up with what I'm doing cooking and trying to also read and respond to things that people are saying during the cooking process. Now, if I was to do that, it would pro I would probably have to focus more on the cooking and I, I would miss a lot of what's being said in the comment section. So I'm not sure if that would work out well, you know, because if people are going to be commenting, especially on what I'm doing cooking as I am cooking, Nine out of 10 chances, I'm probably going to miss their comment because, you know, those, when you do lives, those comments are doing this, you know? So I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Um, if I was to do a cooking live, like I said, um, I probably will be just focused on the cooking and that would be the best thing, I, I think. Now, I have thought about doing, which I probably will do my next time, I have thought about doing a live Q&A. Now, that would be more manageable, where I can go live and answer a lot of your questions as they are being asked uh, in real time. So, that's something that I, I have thought about doing. All right. Barbara Brown asks... Hi, Anthony. How do you entertain yourself when it's raining or very bad weather? I love your laugh and thank you for sharing some of your personal life with us. You know, I'm always laughing at myself. You know, I just, I just, I just tickle myself to death for some reason. You know, <laughs> I think it takes a special kind of person to be able to entertain yourself, to be able to laugh at yourself talk to yourself and and you know and be okay with that and, and that's who I am I just I laugh a lot you know even when it, it, it could be me thinking of something that happened you know last week or something and I will laugh just as hard in this van or outside wherever and as it happened just a few minutes ago you know I have just developed this type of personality where it's so much easier to to be a positive person and and have positive experiences in your life rather than to be a negative person and have negative experiences in your life. So I'm always trying to be and and, and it's not and it's not I mean I'm trying. It's it it just all of these uh character traits of myself are natural. You know, I don't try to be funny. I'm, I I believe I'm naturally funny. You know, things just come to my mind at certain times or unexpected times, and it just comes out. You know, certain certain reactions when certain things happen, like uh, you know, it just happens. You know, that's that's how my mind functions. So yeah, 
All right, let's see. Jean, Jen, excuse me, Jen Plot ask. Hi, Anthony, you have such a calming and peaceful and watching your channel is very calming. Uh, will you ever do a meetup in New York City? We could definitely use your sense of calm in this city. The thing about New York City, places like New York City, um, someone also asked, would I do a meetup in Washington, D.C.? And then as I'm going to include California in that as well, is that I would not know where to begin to have a meetup in those places, you know? New York, for instance, I've been to New York so many times, Manhattan, haven't been to a lot of many of the barrels uh, surrounding uh, Manhattan, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know where to begin. Same with DC. Every time I go to DC, I have some type of small anxiety because of the, the way that DC is laid out. You know, it's nothing like Baltimore. Baltimore, if you go down the wrong street, you can whip around the corner and get back on that same street. I've been in DC several times where I took a wrong turn and Lord have mercy, I don't know where I ended up, you know. And the traffic in DC and places like New York to me are so hectic and it just it just makes it ah it just it just gives you anxiety and I would not know where to begin to to have a meet up in those places as far as California is concerned, there are so many different uh cities in California that would probably be really good. And I know there are a lot of FOAs in that California area. But when you're looking at like San Francisco, Los Angeles, um, Oakland, all the Bay Areas and all of those types of places, you know, it's like, where do I have a meetup? You know, <laughs> San Diego, where do I have a meetup where it would satisfy the whole California states because I don't know. It just seemed to me like I, I wouldn't know where to begin with that. You know, so we'll see what happens in the future. Um again, I'm just getting started in having this freedom to travel to different places. You know that my main focus is to work on campgrounds. So there are going to be opportunities in between the campgrounds for me to go and visit other cities and states and stuff. So we'll see. This question comes from T. Rose and T. Rose asks, Hey, Anthony, love how you're always willing to open up with us. Outside of football, what do you watch in your downtime? Any favorite shows slash movies or addictive series binges? As you can tell, I'm a TV girl. Just wondering if we have any in common and or looking for suggestions. LOL. Okay. Uh, besides football, I am a huge, huge Netflix uh, watcher because next Netflix has one of my favorite type of series, which is the Korean series. I love watching these Korean series that Netflix have. Um, I don't mean I don't mind reading uh, subtitles or anything. It's something about the Korean series. Uh, they seem to me like the actors and actresses are really really good. I'm becoming familiar with the different ones that are. Uh, that I have seen in different movies and everything. And they tell storylines so well. And I prefer to watch series over movies because I love watching and getting invested in the characters and see how the storyline turns out. And so I really, really enjoy watching uh, the Korean series. Now, some of my favorites are Hyena, my Mister, Strangers, uh, Voice. I love, love Voice. It's two seasons of that. And just to name a few of my favorite uh, Korean series. Um, if it's not a Korean series, I also love uh, the series uh, Animal Kingdom. I really, really like that season. It was five seasons of it. I missed the entire fifth season because I moved out of my apartment the week before the last 
episode of the fourth season aired. So I didn't see that episode nor any of the last season. It airs on TNT and I don't even know where to begin to get TNT. I'm not going to get a streaming site just to watch it, but hopefully I'll get to see the last season of that. I also like this uh, series, You. You was really good with, I think his name is Penn Bagley. That was a really good series as well. Um, as far as local channels like ABC, NBC, I don't watch any of those shows because, first of all, I don't even know what streaming app offers all of those. And I'm not going to, I already got enough streaming apps that I'm <laughs> paying for. But Netflix and the Korean series are definitely my favorites that I'm watching. I am currently watching off of AMC Plus. I'm currently watching Interview with the Vampire. I love, love, love that movie with Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt and Antonio Banderas in it, Interview with the Vampire. I love, love that movie. That was one of my favorite movies. And when I saw that AMC Plus had a, not a remake of it, but well, I guess it was it was a they turned it into a series. It's eight episodes, and I am really really enjoying that. It's kind of vampireish, and I love vampire movies. So yeah, that's what I'm currently watching. And I just also started watching a Korean competition show, a physical competition show. It's called um, Physical One Hundred where all these 100 Korean women and men get together and they test their strength and they compete in all these strength type um, competition. I love that type of stuff. Okay. This comes from CC's Life. And CC asks, do you enjoy alone more than with people or do you feel like life is lonely? I don't feel that life is lonely. I never feel lonely. Um, I'm always around people and I choose to, uh, I like the fact that I get to choose when I want to socialize with people. Um, I would not do well in a all by myself situation like uh, BLM land. Um, I think that would make me, I don't think I would be lonely in that type of situation. I think I would become bored in that type of situation, always being by myself out in the woods or wherever those types of areas are located. I think I would become bored and then have the sense of urgency to go back into the city or go back to a campground or something like that. So I never get lonely because the thing is with this lifestyle and the freedom that I have, if I ever feel like I'm getting lonely, I would just go around people. I would just be around people. Excuse me. Next question comes from Angela, the BBW. And Angela asks, okay, it's Angelia, excuse me, Angelia asks, which campground has been your favorite so far and why? How many more new campgrounds do you plan to visit this year? Okay, of course, I have talked about it and talked about it and raved about it that I really love the campground in uh, Pennsylvania, uh, Hillside. I have been going there for this season will be my sixth year going there. It's the longest campground that I have been going to. And I really enjoy it because once again, uh, whenever I go back there, there are several people that recognize me and I recognize them and I'm getting to know a lot of the people there. My friend David, who uh, was at the RV show, I met him up at um, Hillside MPA and he's a snowbird who comes down to Florida during the winter months and he is going back up that way and to that campground again, probably I think a week after me. But yeah, Hillside is definitely my favorite um, because I love the 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 familiarity that I'm getting with the people there. And do I plan on going to new campgrounds? Actually, I've already been to 
one new campground this year. I stopped at Camp Mars, which I made a video and a couple videos while I was there before I came here to Sawmill. Um, I'm also going to one other new uh, campground that I have not been to on my way back up north, which is Oz. And I'm also coming back here to Sawmill in March as well. So, so far, it will be before I get back to North or when I get back to North, it will be two new campgrounds that I have uh, gone to that I have not been to before. Alrighty. All right, this question is from Black Tucson Girl 68 and she asks, Hi Anthony, there are so many videos about nomads. I see that you that you love camping. Do you think you would ever camp in locations outside of the campgrounds? I don't think I will. I like the calmness. I like the relaxation of the campgrounds. I love the the being in a all-male environment that the campgrounds that I choose to stay in gives me. Um, I do not, once again, I do not like or being out in the woods and boondocks by myself. I don't see myself ever putting myself in that type of environment. Um, now, I could go to a non-male, all-male campground, but my problem that I foresee there, and not saying that it's going to happen, with like a family type of campground is that I don't want to be around a bunch of kids running around, you know? And I just, I don't know. I mean, this campground that I'm in and all the other ones that I have gone to thus far are my preferred type of campgrounds that I like going to. So you probably will never see me. Well, I don't know. You know, I might try BLM land type of deal just once as one something that as part of something I've never done before <laughs> because you know the 2023 motto for our FOA community is to do two things that you have not done before and go 10 places that you have not gone before so who knows maybe staying out on uh, BLM land uh, one time will be one of those things that I have never done before all right, the next question is from, let me see. This is from Ime, I-M-E-E, -E, 88. And she asks, what is your favorite color, Anthony? And then she also says, by the way, thank you for your awesome videos and great sense of humor. Stay safe and happy, my friend. My favorite color is, at the moment, is red. I think I look good in red. I think red uh, blends well with my complexion. And I've always thought that dark-skinned people look good in bright colors or brighter colors. And I like myself in red. I like myself in this, like, this blue t-shirt that I had on yesterday, you know. I have a purple t-shirt, so I like myself in colors, uh, and red is definitely one that um, brings out my complexion and everything, you know. So, I would say red is right now, and that only goes for, like, maybe a red sweatshirt or red t-shirt or uh, the hoodie that I have, you know. I ain't gonna be wearing no red pants now. <laughs> Okay, the next question is, Mr. Kevin Washington. Kevin asks, some of these questions are off the hook. Here's mine. Will you ever do a night camping video? Not the extracurricular stuff that goes on, but the animals and night noises. Um, the thing about doing a nighttime video is the lighting. You know, if I do a fire pit type of camping video, You'll see the fire uh, well, but will you see me? If I have my red hoodie on, <laughs> you know, you might see the red hoodie, but will you see this, <laughs> you know? So the problem I uh, foresee in doing a night video is, you know, the lighting. Would you be able to see me and what I'm actually doing and everything? 
So I might just check it out. I might just turn the camera on and because I don't have like, you know, ring lights and all that stuff that a lot of people have and put in the back of the camera as they film it. I don't have all of any of that stuff. So it would just have to naturally pick up from the phone that I'm recording off of. And I don't have any of those stuff. So more than likely, I don't know. If I film something, it, it would it would be like it's almost getting dark but not completely dark yet so that you can still see excuse me what i'm doing all right let me see if i can find some different questions that okay here's one from auntie april and auntie april asks, i don't think i've ever seen you eat candy do you have any favorite candies I don't have any favorite candies, and I don't really eat candy. You know, I don't buy candies. Um, I don't. I don't really. I don't. I don't eat candy. I have favorite snacks, like I love pretzels, the thin ones from like hers, the thin salted ones. Um, I love bag popcorns, like the smart popcorn. Um, that's about it. I'm. I'm not a candy person. All right, let's do a few more. Um, okay. I want to ask answer some some different ones. All right, I'll do this one. Uh, D. Fashaw asks, Anthony, which NFL team do you root for? Do you have plans to watch the Super Bowl? I am born and raised, was born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland, so I will always rep the Baltimore Ravens, no matter what the heck they're going through with this quarterback, Lamar Jackson, right now. So definitely the Baltimore Ravens is my favorite football team. Um, always will rep them. Um, back in the days when I started getting into football, Pittsburgh Steelers were my favorite uh, team with Terry Bradshaw, Franco Harris, and all of those uh, Hall of Famers. But yeah, Baltimore Ravens. All right, this one is from Ann underscore N underscore North Carolina. And Ann asks, hi, Anthony, do you think you would ever consider getting a small RV instead of a van? Okay, I was hoping that i get some questions about this RV thing. As you guys know, I recently went to the Tampa RV show. And let me tell you, it's so easy when you are at one of those shows to think that you want something or the thing with me, I, I really put things in perspective. No matter at the moment, I may want something. It always will come back to, do I need something else? And it always will come back to what makes financial sense to me. You have heard me speak of what makes finance sense to me on our ch channel for so many times, you know. So even if I'm in that moment and I think, oh my God, I want that. I really love that. Like I really love that Coleman Rubicon. And I'm so happy that I just walked away from it at the time and thought about it for a while. Because I always will come back to those two things. Do I need and does it make financial sense to me? I always come back to the conclusion as well that being able to stand up, and I've said this several times in our community, is not that important to me, especially when I'm pursuing a campground lifestyle. It's about being outdoors. It's about exploring nature. It's about uh, meeting people and socializing with people. And, you know, just that sense of peace and relaxation that I'm seeking and want. So, do I need another vehicle that I can stand up in an RV or whatever. Absolutely not. I don't. Would I, do I want one? Maybe. But again, it all comes full circle back to those two things. Now, 
I think that if I was to upgrade from this minivan to something else, my next upgrade and would probably be my final upgrade would be a cargo van. And I would tell you why a cargo van makes sense to me as a next as the next upgrade. Because with a cargo van, there are so many things that I can add that will be very beneficial to my uh, van life. One, if I had a cargo van, I would be able to put solar panels on the roof. Two, if I had a cargo van, excuse me, I would be able to put a roof vent on the roof, possibly. If I had a cargo van three, I would be able to insulate that cargo van. If I had a cargo van four, I would be able to get a diesel heater in that cargo van, um, you know. And then if I had a cargo van five, I would be able to put a kitchen in that cargo van that has a sink, a little prep area in there. And so getting a cargo van as the next step makes more sense to me than jumping from the, the minivan to a big RV or even a travel trailer that I have to pull. Another thing that comes to my mind all the time when I think of getting a travel trailer is it's an extra something that I have to take care of. I have to find a place to store it when I'm not, when I'm traveling, you know. I have to find a place to store it when I'm actually hanging out in Pittsburgh, I mean Pittsburgh, in PA. And as well as Baltimore, because I wouldn't be able to take it to Baltimore with me. Because when I'm out and about visiting my family and friends in Baltimore, I don't want to be lugging a travel trailer behind me and going down certain streets and stuff in Baltimore. So that. Also, with another addition in the back, I have to think about the insurance. All of those things are going to be added costs to my financial monthlies, you know. So it just makes sense to me that if I want something slightly bigger um, that will that I will benefit the most from would be a cargo van, like one of them little GMC cargo vans, you know, because I would get more space than I have. Not a, not a whole lot, but more space. And I possibly can get a bed that goes this way instead of the long way and give me all the other room, you know? So if I'm thinking at all about upgrading, it's definitely going to be a cargo van because there are so many add-ons as I just now listed that I can do to, with a cargo van that will just, wow, just make this lifestyle for me a lot better. All right, okay, let's do a couple more. Let me see. All right, here's a good one. This is from Claire Moland. And Claire asks, I hear that some campgrounds let you get mail, but not many. Have you tried getting packages at campgrounds or through Amazon Locker? And how does that work? If you're not anywhere near a final destination, where the package is supposed to go? Okay, so the campground in PA Hillside, I've had so many packages delivered there. I had the gazebo delivered there. I had my little uh, little breakfast cooker thing delivered there. I've had probably 10 packages delivered there. My theory with uh, campgrounds and deliveries is that you have to allow packages being sent to the campground because you have permanent residence on the property. And where are they supposed to get their mail? So yes, of course, uh, most campgrounds, or I'm not gonna say most, I'm gonna say the ones that I have gone to, I have gotten packages delivered. I'm waiting on two packages today that I can't wait to show you guys what it is. Yes, I bought two more things. And um, it just makes sense for a campground to allow packages in people's mail to come there if they are a permanent resident type of campground. So I've been getting my packages. Now my mail, I have my mail on hold in PA and um, I'm going to have to do it again because you can only hold your mail for 30 days 
So I'm gonna have to redo it, let them deliver it to my mailbox, my UPS. I was going to have the mail sent here. I didn't know at how long I was gonna stay here. I extended my time here for another seven or eight days. I'm not leaving the campground that I'm on now until February the 13th now. I decided I didn't feel like looking for other places to stay. I may as well just stay here. So yes, I do be getting my mail. Um, I ordered four things, four different types of shirts, FOA shirts that, cause you know, I need to start rocking my own gear. So I ordered that like the beginning of January and I'm still waiting on that. And that's going to be delivered to a uh, CVS that has a UPS store inside of it, which is only about 15, 20 minutes from here. So I'm waiting on that so that I can show you guys that, you know, how the actual FOA uh, merchandise looks, you know. All right, so let's see. What, what are we going here? Oh, we at 35. Okay. Let's do one more. Ah, uh, let's see. Ah. Uh. Mm hmm hmm hmm. Let's see. That might do it. Cause I'm. I don't want to keep strolling down and. A lot of these questions are asking what I, am I coming to a certain state? Okay, let's do this one. This is from RG and this will be our final question. RG asks, how did you get into printing press industry? Did you start right after high school? I got into the printing industry. It was kind of a step-by-step -step type of deal. Because when I graduated high school, of course, I was one of those confused ones that was like, okay, what am I going to do? I ain't going into no service, you know. And, you know, I tried the community college type thing for several years, you know. The thing that held me back from community college was math. I am horrible at math. I could never pass the math courses. <laughs> So I just gave up because what's the use of passing all the other courses and math is a major course that you need to pass. And I was just horrible at math. I always had the mentality of this crap that they try to teach me is not going to be a part of my life. I'm not going to be in finances or anything money related. And it was just awful. I just could not get past the math and college and uh, community college. So. I then that just that left working. You know, I wasn't going I wasn't doing too well in college. I wasn't going into the service. So working was the next option. So I got a job at Social Security in Woodlawn. Those of you from Baltimore, Maryland. Social Security in Woodlawn as a student aide. And I worked there for a minute and I did some of their mail stuff as a part of my duties there. And then when that term comes up, because student aid is from a certain length of time, when that time was up, I then started looking for mail room jobs because I felt like I had a little bit of experience from working at Social Security for two years as a student aid. And so I got a job at a place called Tabs on Wilkins Avenue. And it was a mail job where I sorted mail. I just stood there and sorted mail. And then rubber band them up and put them in a basket, a mail basket. I did that for two and a half years. And then I got tired of that. And the supervisors that were in charge were not the nicest. And so I started looking for other mailing type jobs. And then that's when I found in the newspaper. Look, in the newspaper, y'all. That was back in the day where you found your job in the, new, in the newspaper. So I found the job at Port City Press. And I applied for the job. I was in Ocean City when I got the call that they wanted me to come in for an interview. So I went in and when I got back on a Monday, uh, Tuesday, I went, well, I got back Sunday. Tuesday, Monday, I went for the interview and I got the job in the mail room. 
I worked in the mailroom for six and a half years and I kept on hearing people saying how much more money you can make in the press room and that the press room is where the money is to be made. And so after six and a half years, I decided to apply for a press room job. I have never seen a press room a day in my life. I have never been on a press a day in my life. Working there at that time for six and a half years, of course, I've seen the presses and because I went in the areas of them, you know, within the same building, of course. And I decided that I wanted to work in the press room. So I applied for the press room position, which was the lowest on the totem pole called a catcher at the end of the press. And I didn't get the job the first time I applied. I didn't get the job the second time I applied. And then the third time, because the two people that they hired in the position before me didn't even work out that long, um, they gave me the job. And from there, I just started learning every position in time. I only stayed at the bottom position as a catcher for three months. Ooh, put up three fingers, Anthony. Three months, yep. And then I was learning how to be a, um, a feeder on the road stand or road tender and then after that the job that i was on port city press they encouraged you to work your way up to become a operator they paid you you hear what i'm saying they paid you for every step that you learned so it was a great incentive incentive to do and people like that you know and so i was one of those people and i moved my way up to become a operator eventually. I was the operator for 11 years. I had the same road tender for the whole entire 11 years. We had so much fun and that's how it is. And then after being an operator for 11 years, um, I thought I was getting older, you know, my awareness was kind of slipping a little bit with the work. And I quickly realized that I didn't want to be an operator anymore. And I much less rather work at the back of the press as a road tender and be in charge of the paper and putting the paper in the press. And then one black guy got fired. He was a road tender. And I immediately jumped on that position. Now, thankfully, in the job that I was on, they allowed you to go back from an operator to the road tender in the back of the press some jobs may not have allowed you to do that they're like you know they want to keep you in that operating spot because it's more difficult to get an operator than it is to get a road tender you know so they did they let me go back my supervisor at the time was a woman her name was peggy and she immediately let me go back into being a road tender and i was so happy that she did that and that's where I felt the most comfortable at, and I did the best work as a road tender. And for that long explanation, whoo, 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 that is going to do it. I'm quite sure we have some really, really great, let me see, let me answer a couple more. Why not? I rarely make long videos when it's like a Q&A. Okay, uh, Celia, I know I messed that name up. It's S A E L A H Lob L O B B. Ask, what is the most difficult thing about van life? I don't have any difficulties in van life. Um, I have challenges, uh, and the most challenged thing in van life is the weather. That's it. Outside of the weather, now, if I was in a place that had the perfect weather, Van life would just be a, a, a dream to me, so to speak, you know. But it's the weather because at this point in time, and, I, and, and the length of time that I have been doing van life now, I've I've pretty much figured out what works for me, you know. So at this point in time, I don't really have any difficulties in van life, you know. So I don't, I don't, you know. I just. I figured things that worked for me the first the first round, you know, and then from that point, I was just thinking it my thinking process was how to make certain aspects of the lifestyle better, you know, so really didn't have any.
some more questions asking what I come to. Okay, here's a good one. And this is definitely going to be the last one. It's, I don't know, I said it. Okay, T.A. Honey asks, if you were to get into a relationship, would you do this lifestyle with your partner? Now, for me, my ideal situation would be to get in a relationship with someone who enjoys the camp uh, campground lifestyle as well. For someone who has the freedom to, you know, go to different campgrounds and the freedom to travel. In most scenarios, that would be someone that is retired, which means that that someone would be much older than me, or at least, you know, in their 60s or so. Um, the guy that I met here, the naked guy, um, he's retired. He, uh, I'm guessing that he is older than I am, and I'm guessing that he is probably in his 60s somewhere along the way. Um, his situation would be ideal for me because he has been on his campground when it's all said and done for like three months. And anyone who can stay at a campground for three months either is retired or work remote, you know, and can be at a campground for that long. So that would be my ideal situation is to be involved with someone that enjoys the campground lifestyle and, you know, has the freedom to experience the different travels and campground lifestyles. So, yes, T.A., and if I was to meet someone that is not a part of the campground lifestyle and does not um, have and does not have the freedom to, you know, move about like I do, I'm not saying that that would not work. But that person would definitely have to understand, you know, what I do uh, to earn money, and also understand that I don't want to stand still. You know, I didn't get to this point to come to a halt and and stand still and be in one place, you know. So I guess it would be a choice of, okay, do you want to be in this relationship or do you want to continue your freedom and move about? And I most likely will continue my freedom and move about. <laughs> okay, uh, Tanisha K asks, how long do you plan on living the van life? As long as you guys who are the reason why I am able to live this lifestyle will allow me to. If you guys all of a sudden do not allow me to live this lifestyle, then I will make certain changes. I'm quite sure that I'm going to make some bigger changes in the years to come. I'm talking about around retirement time, but for the time being and from now in the next couple of years, you know, a few years, um, this is the way that I intend on living. Okay. All righty. Uh, okay, Lisa D asks, have you ever thought about getting a pet as a travel companion? Um, absolutely not. Um, I don't want any pets that I have to be responsible for and take care of. Um, once again, I love the freedom of being able to pick up and go and do what I want. I'm not in a lonely state of mind where I need a pet to help keep me company or anything like that. So I will probably most likely never get a pet. And especially if I'm not going to get anything bigger, much bigger than what I have right now to live in. Okay. This is definitely the last one, and it's a great one to go out on. Okay. Bella Marie asks, when are we getting more info on this naked man, so you say? <laughs> she said, so you say. This is an all-male clothing optional campground. <laughs> Why would it be so you say? <laughs> it's like that she partially believed me, but she don't believe me. <laughs> I need an update when the time is appropriate. Love you, Anthony, and your content is amazing. Okay, we did speak again. Um, 
I had not seen him after the the initial meeting and talking. Um, I did not see him the next two days. So um, the third day, it was around 7.30 at night. I decided to go and knock on his door to see if he was okay and all of that. But as I was waiting for him to come to the door, he was coming up the road from taking a shower. He says, just taking the shower. He has some food on the grill. I mean, not directly on the grill, like as if he left the food on the grill. He cooks his food in like a aluminum type of uh, pan and put that on top of the grill. Um, and so he told me that he was cooking and this and that. And we talked some more. I didn't want to hold him up. The thing about me is, oh, excuse me. The thing about me is that when I find interest in someone, I don't go Google Gaga over nobody, you know? I take my time. I try to give them a sense of the type of person that I am. And I don't want to, you know, I'm not the guy to be, if I meet somebody, I'm talking on the phone for two hours, you know? Because, you know, two hours is a long time. And, you know, what are you going to go through your whole life in one conversation? So I like to just take my time and unravel things about myself and also learn things about them along the way within a nice period of time. So I didn't want to take up too much this time. I saw that he was okay. Uh, like I said, I hadn't seen him in two days. So I was like, okay, where is he? And then uh, we talked and um, after about 15, 20 minutes, I said, okay, I know you just, you know, got back to your site and you're cooking and everything. I just wanted to see if you were okay. And I said, uh, give me a hug. You know, I just basically was like, you know, it was a natural thing for me. I just went in for a hug. And we hugged, and we hugged for like, I don't know, it was like maybe 15, 20 seconds, but, you know, that can feel like a light, a, a longer much period of time. And then, for me, I am a hugger. I love to hug, and I love to kiss. So, <laughs> I told him while we were hugging, I was like, I love to hug. And he said, me too. Now, here's the thing. When we came out of that hug, he gave me a kiss. And I was, I was like, a little shocked by it. But, and it wasn't like, you know, this all passionate kiss. It was just like, a, it was a peck kick kiss. A little peck kiss. But nonetheless, it took me by surprise. Uh, a pleasant surprise, I might say. I might add. But yeah, so hopefully I'll get to talk because he's not leaving the campsite until the end of March. And I told you guys before, I think I mentioned before, he's going to his next campground. I'm going to that campground as well. I will get there a day before him and then he comes the next day. So even after I leave this campground and do all the things in between in uh, February, I'll get to see him again in March. So hopefully before... Uh, February 13th coming, I actually leave this campground. I will get to talk to him um, a few times more, you know. And that's the update on Mr. <laughs> Naked Man. I can't remember. I know his name, but I, you know, and I try. Look at this fly. This is what I get from opening my door. This fly is around here now and everything, but I won't say his name on here, you know. But anywho, that's going to be it for today's video. You know, I normally don't make these long videos, uh, but they tend to be longer when I do a Q&A because I try to answer as many questions as I can without it being too long. This is probably upwards an hour. But anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this Q&A. Uh, my next idea, my next Q&A video, which will probably be after this one, I'm going to flip the script. I'm going to ask you guys some questions. Okay? So get ready for that. I'm going to ask you guys some questions. You guys always get to ask me questions. I want some information from you guys. I want the tea on you guys. So that's probably going to be coming up really soon. All right, guys. That's going to do it for today's video. As always, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to watch my videos. I appreciate you guys. You know that. I really, really do appreciate you guys. And I'll see you guys the next time.